Now, after Wednesday night's decision to delay once again the UK's departure date from the European Union, the Brexit debate is likely to dominate TV news for a few months yet. Question Time is one of the BBC's main forums for political debate. It's provoked one of its own for changing the venue for last week's programme with only a couple of days' notice. Warren Spencer Bradley was not happy. Please rearrange your metrocentric bias news management. Case in point, removing Question Time from Bolton to Dulwich. Well, the BBC said the decision to switch locations was so that MPs who might have been required for last-minute votes in Parliament on Thursday could still make it in time to the Question Time recording. Others interpreted the decision to move from a leave-voting Bolton to a fee-paying school in Remain-voting London as symptomatic not just of a metrocentric attitude but also of bias on the programme. View articulated by one of last week's panellists, the newspaper columnist Charles Moore. He turned the tables on Question Time presenter Fiona Bruce. Can I ask you a question, Fiona? Because uh, here I am, and I'm delighted and honoured to be here, but I'm, there's a panel of five, and I'm the only Leave supporter. And if you look at the... You're the only person who, who voted Leave, you think? Uh, well, I, the government I, I is think I'm really the only Leave supporter as well, as a matter of fact, well, but uh, we can argue about that, but I'm certainly the only person who voted Leave. And again and again on this programme, the, the balance totally fails to reflect the wider country. Can I just make and, a point, um, Charles? This is a question to me. Let me answer yes, it. Yes, Obviously, the I... government supports the Leave position, and last well, week we had three people who took the Leave position and two who took the Remain position. Well, I didn't the, vote. The, the, uh, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I can't <laughs> agree with you, but, but feel free to answer Tilo's the, question. The Charles Moore's analysis chimed with a number of viewers. One John Taylor recorded this for us. Week after week, Brexit is the main subject on Question Time. And yet, week after week, there's only ever one person who actually wants Brexit, who's on the panel. Will there ever be the situation where there's only one person who doesn't want Brexit on the panel, and all the rest do? No. Well, what's the BBC's view of that claim? In response to the point made by Charles Moore, it said in a statement, since 2016 there's been a range of competing and different positions on Brexit, which BBC Question Time has reflected both on the panel and from our audience. But Question Time isn't the only programme that's faced criticism for what's seen as a preponderance of Remain voices among its guests. The same point has been made to us about programmes including Newsnight and The Andrew Marr Show, and by Lynn Jones about Monday's edition of Politics Live. The BBC are often charged of being biased, and today's Politics Live proved just that. Your panel consisted of three Ramonas and one Brexiteer. What's your excuse today, BBC? And Nicola Smith also thought she detected a wider imbalance. It appears to me that Remain supporters account for the vast majority of people being interviewed or attending panel programmes. Shame on you. Well, let's discuss this now with the BBC's chief political advisor, Rick Bailey. Rick, thanks very much for coming in to Newswatch at what's turning out to be a very busy time politically. Um, has Question Time raised this question of Brexit balance with you? The obligation for all BBC programmes, and particularly for political programmes, including Question Time, is to be impartial, actually to, be, to have due impartiality, and people forget that word due. And it means that programmes have got to think about the context in which they're making judgments about impartiality. So if you think of the context of the referendum in June 2016, voters had a very clear choice between remain and leave. It's a very binary moment mm. in British politics, as all referendums are, but particularly so with that one. The situation has changed a lot since then. Our obligation as journalists after that vote was to hold politicians to account for that decision, to hold the government mm. to account. And don't forget, we've had a general election since then as well, in 2017, when people remind us a lot that both the big parties stood on a platform of exiting the European Union. So to define people individually on programmes like Question Time as either Remainers or Leavers, it's not something to ignore, we've got to take into account, but it's not the be-all and the end-all anymore, because people who might have been on the Remain side mm. in 2016 have stood on a platform of saying, actually, now we're going to leave. What you seem to be saying is that there's no, actually, objective measure of due impartiality, that the BBC decides from situation to situation what due impartiality means. Now, if that is the case, how do you demonstrate to the audience that you are being impartial if you don't have any criteria, objective criteria against that, that can be judged. 
I don't think that it's not objective. I think where you've got to be careful is is thinking that you can do this by maths and slide rules and stopwatches. Do you do you anything really of that kind? Because well, you do do it during elections, don't you? measure the number of people and number of contributions from political parties. At the moment, you're measuring the number of women versus number of men contributors. So you are using those, I, those tallies in some circumstances. Are you tallying up I'm people not, who supported Brexit and people who uh, uh, opposed Brexit? I, I'm not saying the maths is irrelevant. What I'm saying is it's not the be-all and the end-all. So we need to be conscious of how much people are on and what their views are. But we don't go back to some arbitrary definition of what remain and leave was, which doesn't necessarily fit exactly where we are now. If you don't have those figures, how can you refute the figures that, for example, Charles Moore used, which he quoted the Institute of Economic Affairs, 18 months it uh, monitored from June 2016 to December 2017, so after the general election, uh, question time and its radio equivalent, any questions, and it suggested that 69% of the panellists had been declared remain supporters during the rest of and 32% had voted leave. And even if you included in the leave column the people who had shifted their positions, they'd been remained during the referendum but now supported leave, it was still split 60-40. You're still trying to put it in those terms of using slide rules and stopwatches and measures which are not a definition of impartiality. Impartiality, in the end, is about good editorial judgment. And, and a measure that's of that, the BBC's judgment, not the audience's, is what you're of saying. Of course, and that's what journalism is. Right. Journalism is being asked to make those judgments. And if you like, one of the tests of that is what does the audience think of that? And still the BBC is trusted by more people than any other organisation to be telling the truth and to be giving an impartial account of, of the, what's been happening in Brexit, which after all is an incredibly complicated political situation. What advice then have you given to Question Time and to similar programmes about how they construct panels at this very sensitive time politically when we are still aiming to achieve Brexit but it hasn't been delivered? So that question of due impartiality, obviously programmes have a long time scale in which to think about that. It might be over a whole year or o over a series of programmes where we make sure that views are represented appropriately. There will be moments where that impartiality needs to be judged on a, a shorter time scale, as now when we're in an election period, and it needs to be judged more carefully around parties as much as Brexit, leave and remain. So you're talking about different um, uh, ways of approaching this. That's why I, I'm not very keen on the word balance, because balance implies only two sides. And actually, this is much more complicated than that. And there are many different issues you've got to talk about. Just before we finish, um, as we record this interview, uh, we know that there are expected to be European Parliament elections. What sort of challenge does that pose for BBC News? I mean, it's a big challenge for everybody. We don't even know if the elections are actually going to take place. So, you know, we're starting an election period without even knowing if people will actually vote. So. I, it's a pretty unique set of circumstances, and I go back to my word due. Due impartiality means we've got to think really carefully about this particular context and make sure that we're thinking carefully about what impartiality means when we've got this European election. In some parts of the UK, we've got local elections at the same time. That's a really complicated position against that background of Brexit. So a lot of uh, thinking to go on over the coming days and weeks. Rick Bailey, Chief Political Advisor, thanks very much.